Hi everyone uh, and welcome to this Springwise Plus Change Now mini session uh, podcast with, with me, James Bidwell, the chair of Springwise and Santiago Lefebvre, the founder and CEO of Change Now. Um, Change Now is the world's largest event for the planet and it's an event for which um, Springwise is delighted to be a partner. Uh, and of course, most of you know, but Springwise is the leading platform for global innovation, uh, for positive change and sustainable change. And I always think that there is such a great synergy between what we're doing at Springwise and, and what Change Now is, uh, that it's such a huge pleasure. And we're getting ready for Change Now 2022, 19th, 20th and 21st of May. Santiago, how is uh, how are the preparations going and how are you guys all feeling now? Well, here we're, we're feeling super excited, actually, because we've been working on this for now uh, uh, several months, uh, almost a year on it. Uh, and also, it will be the first time since our edition uh, in 2020, uh, it's the first time we get back to an in-person format. So we are super excited about it. Change Now, so as you mentioned, also is the world's largest event of solutions for the planet. It's the only event, except for the COPs, uh, where you have so many different kind of people and participants joining together. And, uh, and so this creates a real energy uh, on the spot, you know, in the venue. How many people do you expect to come, um, Santiago? Well, we are expecting around 30,000 participants uh, wow. this year. We've experienced so much disruption since uh, we last met um, live. We had COP26 in, in Glasgow, UK last um, last last year at the end of the last last November we've had the IPCC report um we've had you know we've got the conflict we've got you know the pandemic so so the dis the levels of disruption are it's so accelerated and accentuated now so so for me change now comes at such an important time um how is the momentum of this agenda growing with it amongst the community and, and what you're seeing and all the participants that that are you're talking to every day Santiago what you're mentioning here is super important uh, because indeed I think that for a couple of years now we've been experiencing very um, I would say um, extreme uh, events and conditions you know we've been through a global pandemic and then there is war uh, in in Europe and you also have every year we we have, bigger and bigger, uh, I would say, um, wildfires. And at the same yeah. time, you have floods. And it's something something going from extreme to extremes and disruption all the time. And we are in a critical moment where we need to be super solid because we need to take care of uh, the short-term events without forgetting that we need to build the long-term future. And this long term actually can be only built if we do it in the short term the right decisions as well. So we are in this very uh, complicated moment where we need to to have this um, wisdom and and capacity of foresight to say, okay, things are happening, but don't lose the fact that we are still facing one of the biggest and hugest challenges we have for this planet. So I, I would say a change now tries to. Uh, impersonate this first okay uh, we have those issues and we are talking about them at change now but we're also here to show what uh, what the people in this planet is already creating to prepare yeah. for this uh, better, a better future uh, and in the trends we see also is the fact that the cop 20 the cop 26 uh, uh, well, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah in glasgow um it was the cop of the of the climate justice. It was the first time this agenda of climate justice was so strong, you know. And I believe that this is also the fact that um, this is something new for well to see a generation of young people who are so aware of um, the suffering of other young people in the world, you know. There is this kind of empathy that is really growing in this young generation that makes that it's really a topic in the agenda. So this is one of the themes, but as always, we are uh, tackling the issues of energy, 
uh, more and more energy and mobility are really strong topics. The presence of mayors uh, will have amazing mayors from all around the planet joining together uh, around 30 mayors to meet the solutions and, and to create the sustainable city. And we also um, talk about ocean and circular economy, so many topics that are very important. Yeah. Look, it's it's amazing. And I've, um, I mean, you've, you've talked about a lot of things there, but I think this whole idea of next generation, and we saw that when we were up at COP, the kind of the energy of the, of the youth. And, and I'm sure we'll see that a change now that, you know, the next generation are really, really concerned. And, the, and a lot of the solutions, one of the great pieces of um, parts of change now is that you showcase these innovators from all around the world who are have created the solutions that we need uh, to deal with, you know, massive, massive issues. And of course, the the, the biggest of all, the, the whole climate change agenda. I just don't want uh, people to think that we're saying that uh, this will be the youth who will have to make the change. I think that we, our generation right now, uh, has this opportunity and this responsibility to actually start doing enough work so the young generations can say, okay, I'm still op optimistic about the future. Otherwise, yeah. they will just go uh, in with uh, anger and, and nothing really constructive. We need to make to put the basis and do our part so they can just take on after us. Um, Santiago, picking up on the on the energy agenda, and I just wanted to cover that a little bit. I mean, you know, the, and it's, it's so 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 um, top of mind at the moment with the with the conflict in Ukraine, um, and also the you know the opportunities presented by the transition economy to to um, you know a, a, a kind of carbon neutral fo you know uh, economy without fossil fuels. It was a big topic in the French election. How are you thinking about energy at Change Now? Who are some of the participants who are going to come in and talk to us? Uh, how do we learn, you know, and what are some of the innovations that you're seeing? Yeah, of course. Um, so the, the topic of energy is super interesting because you, know, you are, we're talking of such a big subject uh, that some people sometimes just feel that they can't do anything about it, you know? Yeah. And what we try to show with Change Now this year through uh, this energy track is that actually we can change things. We can change things in two ways. First, there are some great innovators talking about um, uh, what they're doing in, in, uh, in renewable energies. Uh, we have uh, things about, uh, we, we have a, a startup uh, called Equium, for example, who is uh, making energy uh, thanks to sounds. Uh, the vibrations of of, um, of an engine and and everything producing sound vibration can generate also energy. So this is something a quite a breakthrough uh, uh, innovation that we are following on. We're we're following this idea now for three years. So they are coming back this year. They are really growing, and we're excited about about it because we see that every year they come back with everything they. They earned at the last edition with the connections, the support. They are coming bigger and bigger. Uh, there is a lot of things also happening on, on hydrogen. We're looking at, the, at this as well. Uh, but this mix of innovation between how we can make um, solar, uh, wind, or many any other renewable energy uh, cleaner, and yep. also um, and also hydrogen. Um, this is the th first thing. Innovators can do something about it. Yep. And the other thing is that actually citizens can do something about it as yep. well. Um, because there is a tool that we don't use a lot. This is um, the tool of, uh, how to say that, of, well, the law. Okay. How uh, yep. there are laws that can help us um, slow down or stop some fossil fuel projects. And so we'll have on stage different speakers uh, that really incarnate that from uh, Chibeze Ezekiel, who, who really stopped a project uh, in, in Africa about uh, oil. Uh, also, Klein Earth, who yep. they're really, well, they're really, they know how to do this also. And they find, I would say, I can't say the loopholes, but they, they find the leverages 
uh, in the loss. So we can really increase, in a way, the cost of accessing to new fossil fuels. And at, at a point that this is not even interesting to do so. You know? And so actioning this, um, uh, this power of law is something also that we want to show here. It's fantastic to have that mix of that kind of very heavyweight legal uh, you know, going after governments and, you know, and they deserve to be gone after on, on these issues and, and really fighting for the environment as well as all the innovations coming through. And that's part of the magic of of change now is is those people all together and coalescing and, and having those debates. So I'm really excited about that. And you mentioned, um, Santiago, also the the power of cities, cities and citizens, but cities and mayors. And, and when I was... Um, you may not know, but I was the CEO of Visit London, uh, the tourism for, for London. I was very much involved in the uh, 2012 Olympics uh, in, in a past life. Um, and the power of cities to make the change and, and the power of mayors who, who sometimes can step up where governments aren't, aren't really stepping up. How, how are you thinking about that? For the second edition in 2018, we identified the cities and mayors as key players in this transition. Um, why? Because for um, most of the activities in the world and the and so the pollution and the CO2 is emitted from cities. Yeah. Um, and so if we manage to solve the issue at the city level, we we have solved a good part of the equation. And so having the mayors and cities involved is super important. And what we do every year is that we go and gather around 30, uh, 30 uh, mayors. During one day, we show them the state of the art of innovations for a, a better, uh, for a sustainable city. And yeah. they make, and we also make them work with the solutions during the afternoon. So at the end of the day, they've really discovered a lot of things and also started to create to, to, to create connections with uh, solutions that they, they, that they can implement in their cities. This is the the bet we do every year, uh, and that pretty and that works pretty well actually uh, on the city track. It's brilliant, and it's so good. This whole kind of idea of solutions and and what we're observing across Springwise, and you know we're we're about innovations, but innovations are are a lot of the time solutions, and marrying those solutions that are emerging in you know with the scale and the infrastructure of and and the kind of the 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 power if you like and the influence of um of the city leaders and the civic leaders uh, is 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 so cool and it's um it's great to see a lot of these things come to life and as you say then scale and as you see over your various editions you can see them make progress and um and kind of and and scale and and make that difference um, and what's super exciting about the cities is also that we see how this is spreading uh, across the globe uh, yeah. because we we still have you know representatives and mayors from European cities such as um, Amsterdam, Paris, uh, Athens, and many others. But we also have now people coming from uh, from Iran, from Brazil, from Africa, and that really shows that uh, this is moving at a very large scale today. today. So that's super, I would say, um, encouraging for us and, and for this track. And change now, you know, as the catalyst for a lot of that, which is, you know, you should really be congratulated about because it is just fantastic to see that moving. And you can imagine, you know, Brazil with all its problems, uh, you know, to have cities and mayors st standing up for the climate and standing up for the for the rainforest and for, you know, for um, for this agenda. So giving them the confidence and the and the support. One of the other sort of tracks that, that cuts across all of this is is kind of the investment community and and the kind of I know that you have uh, you invite quite a coterie of, of VC and PE kind of level in, investors and 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 they're there I guess to to see what's new because you're ahead of the game with change now. Um, how are you finding that community engaging with this agenda and is there a difference this year from a couple of years ago? Yeah. Uh, I think it has been a privilege to to be at the forefront of what happened in the investment field. Um, because between each session, we see a huge change in the um, 
attractiveness of this uh, of this field. Uh, the first year it was really we had a couple of, uh, of impact investors who were really really I would say uh, core investors in this field. And then we started to have people saying, okay, and, and normal VC saying, oh, this is interesting what you're doing. Tell me more. And the third year, they were totally crazy about these innovations that were showing that um, they were also based on real business models. And that has been accompanied by the fact that startups themselves were, in average, um, uh, moderating from, I'm oh, sorry, um, uh, raising. Yeah. Uh, from 200 to 200,000 euros on average to above 1 million one year after. So that shows that even at the startup level, maturity was growing fast. And now this year, I think, uh, well, we are, uh, we'll have around 800 investors wow. uh, from, I would say, all the fields uh, you can imagine from sustainable food to, uh, to cities and, and circular economy and ocean. Uh, so that's cool. And what's new, I would say, this year that we just uh, created a pilot last year, but this year is the first time we'll do it at that state, at that scale. We have an all morning dedicated to investors who are creating or launching a new fund, and they are looking for limited partners to put money in the fund. And so this is which are a new tool to accelerate. Uh, the finance, the financing of, uh, of this transition. So it's like a, a dragon's den for um, for funds, for which is great. It's good exactly. to see the investors on the other e on the other end of it, rather than the investees. So I'll I'll look forward to that. So we've talked a bit about um, we talked a bit about energy. We've talked a bit about the investment track. I mean, there's there's many many themes that you're covering, you know, from oceans to plastics to circularity. I wanted just to pick up on because we haven't got time to go through them all now, but but thinking a little bit about, I guess, the agriculture, the biodiversity, the food agenda, which is, to, is, is heightened at the moment because of the conflict, but also was even before then, I think this whole idea of, uh, you know, increased population, we need to increase the food production globally. We also need to cut the um, emissions from agricultural agriculture, you know, massively, I think it's by 78% by 2030 from that, just that stream. And it's a it's an emerging investment topic as well. So, so, so could you talk a little bit about how that's playing out? And uh, it's it's certainly a topic that I'm very fascinated in. And and our Springwise community, we can see there's there's lots of new innovations coming through that are relating to biodiversity and ag tech. Yeah. Well, first of all, I would say that um, all big shifts uh, in what's it in any society or civilization. Uh, was went hand in hand, you know, with a, a drastic change in the food system, in the agricultural system, yeah. and I believe that because we are now at the beginning of a revolution, which is environment, environmental and social, there is also the need for this new model of, of, of the food system, and a lot of things are happening. But for me, if there's something that is really um, surging here uh, as a real trend is the one of regenerative agriculture. And I think it's a topic which is fascinating uh, because we just realized that for almost 5,000 years, we've been doing things wrong, you know, in the, in the wrong way. Um, and now actually it's not technical, um, revolution that is happening on agriculture is a science revolution. It's a science because we start to know how works the soil. Yep. Uh, and I think that, and we can expand that a bit more because um, today what we're living is also a science revolution, meaning that the, 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 the system earth, the earth system, you know, is, a, is something which is pretty recent now. And We've been living for so many years without knowing exactly how that was working. And so now that we have this knowledge, there is a lot of um, consequences. And and for me, uh, uh, I think just to get back to, to food, ag regenerative agriculture is a, is a fascinating uh, a topic that we are covering pretty well this year. 
fantastic so that i mean uh, again the the whole concept of regeneration actually has has sort of emerged over the last 18 to 24 months and um you know this concept of rather than just stopping doing stuff um but actually making sure that everything we do is 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 positive um and and going back into the system if you like so i and i know that you uh, for people listening, you you mix so well the you know the really robust science, and you have fantastic speakers who are telling us, you know, talking about the science, and then you have the kind of the the, the solutions and the innovators as well. So again, that 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 whole stream will be will be fascinating, um, and I and I can't wait. Actually, I'm I'm really excited about that. We're going to wrap soon, Santiago, because you know we have have much to do, particularly you. But is there any anything else um, you wanted to mention? Uh, anything you wanted to highlight before uh, before we we sign off and I and I just kind of sum up for us? Well, yes, of course. Uh, there's something I think is also super important, which is that uh, well, change now we talk about a lot about innovation, but change now is also a lot about wisdom and how to be a better human being somewhere um, and also about how do you tell the story of the world we are living in this is super important because the Im the image you have of your desired future has a lot of impact on the way you live your day-to-day -day life you know and so change now has a huge place uh, for arts for cinema we have a, a, a movie, a movie theater during the evening inside the Grand Palais Femer, uh, to to see different movies really about these uh, those topics, and we also have, for example, the participation of Adam McKay, uh, the uh, the the director of the movie Don't Look Up, uh, with Brilliant. Leonardo DiCaprio, yep. and and I think that this is a, a real example of how cinema images can. Have a cultural impact, and I think this is this is really what we are we have to 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 target. How do we build this new culture that will make us that will just make that doing this transition is normal? Yeah, and I think you make such a good point um, that this is about you know it's almost like uh, you know we need to really reflect and we need to. Uh, you know, kind of, and, and this happens. The mirror is, in a way, the sort of we're going back to some of the old systems. You know, and and we realise that you know what we've done in these sort of in the recent years is kind of the wrong thing to be doing, as you were saying. And and the importance of culture, um, and 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 film, and and I'm so excited about the. I, I didn't know about the the films and and Adam McKay. I mean that 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 um, will be great to 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 see all of that. But it it gives a um, it gives a a sort of a backdrop that is almost more solid. You know, and more, and as you say, you talk about wisdom, and you talk about um, kind of grounding, if you like. So, whereas change now is a, is an urgent movement because of the agenda, and in, and the solutions are important, but but it is fundamentally, and I think about you know my kids and next generations, you know they're going to need to live and think about living differently. People who are listening to this ahead of time can still get tickets on your website at changenow.world. How are you helping people who can't make it in person uh, get to get to Change Now and experience it? So it's not easy actually to to develop um, uh, this experience uh, on an online format. Yeah. But yeah. this is also something we will try to um, to deliver through our. Well, you can go to the platform and see all the conferences, but we also have a live TV. Uh, so you can really have a, like a, t a short TV program showing you the depth and breadth of uh, the content of Chen and what this experience is. Most important, we hope that all those people who are joining together uh, will come with the, with, you know, this strong will to collaborate, learn from each other, talk to each other, and, and design our future. The energy of the experience is is just so powerful and and would urge everyone listening to this to um to attend and 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 springwise as you know will be creating a report with a lot of this content for uh, for your for the 30,000 people who are coming and and people who are who are not able to make it 
Um, and we're so excited to be a partner and to be spreading this message and um, participating this year, Santiago. So, you know, good luck to the, you and the team. Um, we'll see you in Paris. And um, it's, it's been fantastic talking to you today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise, James.